This episode of the Busted Wide Open podcast is brought to you by Blueberry. Blueberry offers the best media hosting, accurate listening stats, and their all-new PowerPress Deluxe Sites, a no-setup WordPress website for your podcast with all the necessary links to share your show with the world built right in. If you currently produce a podcast and are looking for a better host, or if you're looking to start a new one from scratch, head over to orbitaljigsaw.com slash BWO and sign up for the best media hosting and a PowerPress Deluxe site to get your first month absolutely free. That's orbitaljigsaw.com slash BWO, or just use the promo code BWO at checkout for your first month absolutely free. And now, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only two-time PWG Battle of Los Angeles champion, King Ricochet, and you are listening to Busted Wide Open Podcast. You're listening to the Busted Wide Open Podcast, dropping the elbow on the hottest topics in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling, with your hosts, Nick Howell and Sir Ian Dangerous. Coming to you from the Orbital Jigsaw Network Arena in sunny Southern California. Welcome back to the Busted Wide Open Podcast, but if this is your first time joining the show, I'd like to welcome you to episode 166. My name is Nick Howell. And in solidarity with the Fox and USA executives who also apparently didn't change clothes but in those war rooms all weekend long... (laughs) Because realism, I am Sir Ian Dangerous, and welcome to the show, where today we'll be talking mostly about Monday Night Raw. Yes. And also touching on New Japan, who had their big King of Pro Wrestling show this weekend. And we'll touch a little bit on NWA's Power Week 2, which just <laughs> finished up. And so I've got a couple okay. of notes from that as well. Uh, but yeah, this, it's uh, the second round of the draft happened, Nick, and... Now we're seeing a bit better the landscape of WWE. I mean, that's one way to describe it. It happened. It happened. It was a thing. (laughs) Yeah. There was a draft that occurred uh, totally like off the cuff. They had no idea what they were doing. And obviously the USA and Fox executives were working tirelessly, tirelessly on this thing. Very genuine. Didn't feel fake at all uh, or BS, but, uh, yes, can't wait to talk about that. Nick, before that, let's get into the housekeeping and then we can get on to the show and discuss all the things that happened so far this week. Yes, guys, as always, come join us over on Facebook in the Busted Wide Open discussion group. Uh, just search for Busted Wide Open. You'll find our page. Give it a like. Slam that like button. And uh, then send us a join request to get into the group. Also, join our Discord server, uh, which we're very excited. That is, you know, I put a video up for those of you that have been wanting to know how, more about how to use that. You can find that in the Facebook discussion group. Thank you, everybody, for all of the feedback that I've gotten uh, on that and Discord in general. Very good notes taken there, so we'll put some of those into place. Uh, you can also find Find us over on Twitter and Instagram at BWO Podcast. Uh, streaming live here on YouTube at youtube.com slash busted wide open every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern and every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's youtube.com slash busted wide open. Come on in, join the live chats for every single one of our shows. We got a lively group in here tonight, Ian. It looks like everybody's wound up from watching Monday Night Raw. But last and certainly not least, we cannot not thank our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting this show, for being a part of of this grand journey that Sir Ian Dangerous and I are on to bring you all of the wrestling content we can. And if you want to get in on some of that, head over to patreon.com slash BWO. Sign up for one of those awesome reward tiers, uh, such as the ability to get show notes, ask uh, questions every week for our new patron mailbag series that we do every Saturday, and access to some other bonuses like swag, Discord roles in the new server, all kinds of good stuff over at patreon.com slash BWO. Ian, what do we got to look forward to this week? Oh my goodness! Well, just on this on this show alone, we've got Raw and New Japan, and then later on the week, you know how it is. We've got AEW and NXT on Wednesday. We've got today, like as our show is going on, you got AEW Dark and NWA Power. You've got on Thursday NXT UK, Friday Friday SmackDown, and then you've got us on yes. Saturday Nick. So. Yeah, it's a it's a big busy week, but I'll tell you what, before we talk about any of it, we have to talk about the big news. Eric Bischoff is Eric out. Eric Bischoff to AEW. You heard it here first. Eric, 
Well, I'll tell you one thing he is. I don't know about AEW, <laughs> but he's no longer with WWE. Did he actually do anything in that he three months? He moved to Connecticut. That's about it. Like, we wow. kept hearing that he wasn't showing up or he'd leave early. He wasn't, like, making any friends. He wasn't talking to people. And then this week, it turns out he's done. He's not, like, moving to a different position in the company. He went straight from executive, from nothing, to executive, to nothing. He is gone. He's toast. And Bruce Pritchard, who said he didn't want to leave Texas, is now moving his ass to Connecticut, and he's taking over the position as executive director of SmackDown. Huh. Bruce Pritchard got the big call-up, uh, and I'm left wondering, what happened with Is it Eric 1996 Bischoff? or something? Did I, did I get in a time machine? Was he just there for the transition to Fox, and then out after that, was there some sort of thing that he just... He wasn't on the same page, or he got there and just was like not happy with what they were having him do. Or didn't he have a podcast at one point beforehand? Or maybe he'll cut fire that back up and tell us what was what actually went yeah, down. Yeah, you know, it was part podcast part two where he describes the last four months. I would I would love to know. I would yeah. be fascinated to know what the hell just happened. And what was the backstage? <laughs> because here's the thing: I want to know if there was just no plan in place for what to do with him. Where he got there, and WWE is just such a disorganized company that he was like, I, you guys got nothing for me. I don't know what to do. Uh, cool, I'm out. Meanwhile, Paul Heyman's over on Raw saying, cool, you give me this power, I'm going to run with it. Because all the reports I heard from this week was Paul Heyman was pulling some major strings backstage, especially when it came to who was going where in the draft. So, yeah, talk about a tale of two cities here. You got Paul Heyman on one side who's just – going crazy and on the other side you've got bischoff who didn't do a damn thing really You're from right. all reports so yeah i would love to, i can't wait to hear more about this all we know right now is looks like pritchard's taking over smackdown which on the one hand i think he's a he's you know interesting creatively he likes to try new things on the other side uh the times that he's run shows i think about his time in tna it isn't always good results, especially for the women. He has a bad track record of uh, of booking women. And I posted this in the Facebook discussion group about an hour ago. But I found an old interview with him uh, where he talks about how he doesn't like Sasha Banks. He doesn't think Sasha Banks is is there yet. Now, Grant, this, this was 2016, so three and a half years ago. That so maybe his position has changed. In the grand scheme of things. But maybe his position has changed. She's also done some re rejiggering of herself. Maybe he has a, a higher opinion of her now. But, man, he buries her in that interview. And she's on his brand now. She's on SmackDown. So Awkward. On the Yeah. <laughs> he also buried Titus O'Neil. Like, it was just a bunch of stuff that, ugh. Uh, check out that interview if you want to be scared for the future of SmackDown. But on the other side, like I said, there is – a potential that we could see some interesting stuff because he has had some good creative ideas in the past. So sure. Uh, very curious to see what Pritchard does with SmackDown and how that works out. Given that once Vincey boy goes off and has the XFL on his plate as well, he's going to want to spend less time running these shows. So yeah, that's the big news right there. Bischoff out Pritchard in and uh, Chad is asking how long until Vince Russo comes back with this. Oh, God, no, <laughs> no, never, never, no. He can't even keep a podcast anymore. I think that right. guy's truly, truly burned all his bridges. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, you know, it's the, it's the WWE, never say never. And that was no, like, that couldn't be any more true than what happened this Monday night. So, Nick, let's not waste any more time and go and talk about Monday Night Raw. So uh, let's open this up by talking about a positive before we get into the okay. draft and start shredding that thing to bits and pieces. <laughs> let's talk All about right. something positive. Pyro. Okay. We've got Pyro back. Yes. yes. What are your you... thoughts on the Pyro being back? Is it is it everything that you remember and that you've pined for for the last few years as it's been gone? Here is the thing to notice about this show and Pyro in general and any show that has Pyro versus all of those shows, all the episodes we had with no Pyro. When you start this show with the entire stage blowing up and catching on fire and sparks shooting everywhere and gouts of flame, that audience, when you cut to the audience, they're all jumping up and down and hooting and hollering and screaming and yelling. And as someone watching on TV, you kind of sit back on your couch and go, whoa, that was cool. And I imagine the live audience, you're sitting there going, holy crap, that was amazing. 
it's it really loud if you've off. never seen it live in person. I have seen it live and it is insane, but yeah. it's but like but it does. It hypes you up so much. And so then the the impression that you get sitting at home and watching it is, wow, that crowd is ants. Without that, and you just have like Roman Reigns' music hitting or Triple H's music hitting or whatever they have to open the show, right? The audience is just kind of sitting there going, All right, when's the show gonna start? Yeah. 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 Right? It's no, it's such a marked difference from one to the other with the pyro. Like I it's it's why when they first took it away, I was sitting there just going, What are you what are you doing? Like I understand from a financial standpoint that you might think this is a good business decision, but talk about a way to uninvest your audience. Like if it, you have such an easy way to hype that crowd and get people just rolling on the show. I, yeah. Even it's if you also, don't have it for it, superstars, have it just to open the show. Well, you mentioned the people that are sitting at home watching. The other thing I want to mention is like, th- there's a bit of FOMO when you see all this pyro and shit blowing up. Yeah. And they're like, Oh my God, the next time they come through, I've got to go to this show. Holy yeah. crap. I don't that understand amazing. why, why are ticket sales down? Well, because the live shows aren't that exciting no. anymore. Might as well be house you know? shows with just more lights. Yeah, part of it is having those explosions. Yes. So, yeah, welcome back, Pyro. So happy to see it. Great way to start the show. And then we started off with Becky saying, hey, Sasha's injured. I can't fight her for who gets the first uh, draft pick this week. So I'm fighting Charlotte instead. And they did a nice little bit of business that, reignited the kind of beef between them, and then they went and they had a match, a pretty decent match. Um, the strange thing was was that Charlotte was kind of beating Becky up the entire match, and then Becky wins on a surprise roll-up at the end. The most thought, devastating move in the WWE. <laughs> it's it's as good of a finishing move as vacant is a champ. That's so, true. yeah, it, fine, all right. We always know that WWE loves its roll-ups. Um, my bigger beef here was, like... How were they going to do it? How are they going to do the when they had to alternate three raw picks to two SmackDown picks? What exactly was your plan? Yeah. If uh, if Charlotte had quote unquote won, and like I, I thought about that as this match began, and I had kind of thought about it last week when they announced it, and they did the Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins thing too with the same same thing. I was like, well. Raw kind of has to win here, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're not going to go SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown, Raw, Raw for picks. That just would be weird. I mean, you could have. You could have had let Raw get two second and third pick. Yeah, you know, we'd I probably mean, be here complaining about it if they had had SmackDown yeah, go. And how did they get why two picks just... in a row? Why, blah, 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 blah. Right, right. Well, I didn't, why don't you just have Raw win? It would just make more sense. Well, here's what made the most sense. Just don't have the dumb match. Do yeah. do something else. Like, <laughs> don't just don't do it. Because it, it does feel like it feels arbitrary if you just Or don't reveal the whole all. grand plan that Raw gets three picks because it's three hours and SmackDown's two hours and blah, 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 blah. Well, that makes sense to me. That does actually make sense to it me. It does, you but know? maybe don't reveal that that up front and make that well, something to. that just happens because they got the first pick. Uh, well, it, you, you have to do it that way. Otherwise, it seems like they're thinking even less about how to do this, as, as, <laughs> like, <laughs> even less off the cuff. Uh, yeah, so, it, okay, fine. Becky beats Charlotte. Raw gets the first picks. So, all right, cool. Nick, it's time. Let's talk about round two of this draft, which was once again announced every pick by Stephanie McMahon. This time she did two rounds at a time, so it was even more boring. Did she? <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. Less investment. Yeah, she did round one, Raw and SmackDown alternating, and then like there would either be a commercial break or they would like have a pause, and then she would just be like, all right, round two. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was it was just as unexciting as it sounds. No. As much as they like, hyped up all the executives, I couldn't believe that they didn't have – some like Goodell bot figure come out like a corporate suit, uh, come out and actually announce the picks or right. Each Get representing, some actors to. Pre- you know? I mean, they already they had enough. They actors had rooms to fill full of actors. They could have had one of those jabronis come out and do and exactly. play the part. Like the you know, brief, the stupid briefcase. Look in the briefcase and you know <laughs> have some sort of reactions immediately, like as opposed to cutting to like pre-taped footage of the stupid war rooms. You know that you just recycled from Friday. Yeah, that guy had like, the same face paint on for like a week. Right. They had the same clothes. Cletus yeah. <laughs> didn't move the entire time. <laughs> like the guy. I uh, anyway. All right. We could go and complain about all of the the nitpicks we have about their presentation of this again. Yeah. Uh, along with the fact that you have Stephanie McMahon, who is not exactly anybody's favorite figurehead out here with her annoying voice going. And in round two, SmackDown gets the mama You know. 
Oh, yeah. We, once again, we're going to walk with him. It's Elias. Ah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm still I'm still reeling from it. Yeah, uh, not not the best presentation for this. But you know, what, Nick, let's just let's take a step back. Okay. Presentationally, presentationally, it was painful, but they did make choices. They made decisions. We now know the the way that pretty much everybody's breaking down on both brands, right? So I'll run it down here real quick. Okay. Raw round one, Seth Rollins, Charlotte going to Raw, and Andrade mm. in the first round for Raw, in the first round for SmackDown, Brock Lesnar and New Day. Uh, people were asking in the chat why Brock didn't go higher like last Friday, and it's because they had two pools. They had pools of people you could pick from on both shows. You couldn't pick from the other from like the the Monday night pool on Friday. So that's why Brock was held and Seth was too for tonight. But they went first overall for their brands. You know, it's when Seth Brock. Yeah. So it, it did that did make sense. Uh, there was part Question. of me that thought that the champions were already the people that were the current like, branded would champions would automatically right. be with their shows, and that this surprised me even more last night when they made these three picks because I just forgive me for assumption assumption is the mother of all mm. but at the same time I I think we got one shocker in there I never saw Charlotte Flair going to Raw I don't think I thought anybody. that was the whole reason um yeah. that they did the whole thing with with Bailey and her so I I was curious uh this well, this really weird. blew my mind who do they I mean we'll get to it but who do they have female wise on Smackdown now Bailey and Sasha and they're supposed to be on the same side so weird. They, they replaced them all with a bunch of MMA and boxers. Ronda Rousey and over there. I don't see any MMA boxer women over there. Oh, I, I meant yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. You know what I mean. Okay. So that so Charlotte going to Raw. That was a bit of a shock. Um, yeah. especially considering how much she and Becky have feuded. Do we need more of that feud? Anyway. Curious. Uh, also Andrade. Not surprising he went where Charlotte went. Not surprising at all. No. But very surprising that he went third. For Raw. I'm not surprised like, by that either for the same reasons. There's, she has pull at this point. I know guys. it's I know it's arbitrary. I know yeah. it's arbitrary, but it's still, you know, this is they put the some more thought into this. It's the optics, maybe. I don't know. Um there's certainly some people that weren't picked that optically is Andrade's brutal. the least of my concerns from this draft <laughs> last night. We'll All talk right. about those as we get there, but All right, so um, we'll get there. Uh Raw Raw round two, the Kabuki Warriors. Rusev and Alistair Black, very str again, very strong for Raw. Lots of good people for Raw. Yep. Uh, SmackDown gets Daniel Bryan uh, and Bailey. Daniel Bryan, by the way, already tweeting with Drew Gulak about how they want to have matches together, and I'm all wait. for that. Yeah, I'm salivating bring, at that. Bring that on. That's good <laughs> stuff. Uh, Raw round three. Cedric Alexander, Umberto Carrillo, went real high, and Rowan. And then uh, SmackDown got Shinsuke Nakamura and Ali, so they didn't go anywhere. They didn't really move. Yeah. Um, Umberto Carrillo, yo, I've been calling him out as being like the next big thing since he was like the second match in NXT. You've been on him for a good six, eight months now, dude. My, my prophecy is coming true on this. It so is. we'll talk more about, about that in a second because there's a couple more Raw picks I want to mention before we talk about Carrillo and what's going to be going on on Raw. Uh, Raw round four, Buddy Murphy, nice. Jinder Mahal, eh. Not so nice. What the Our hell? Truth. Our truth. Why not? He's around, and uh, maybe and maybe Paul can get him over. I do think there's. I do see potential in gender. I do. Call me crazy. You're crazy. I I do. Okay. <laughs> that we try. We tried that an exp that experiment, and it was a massive. Failure. We tried that experiment with Vince writing it. I want to see Paul Heyman write Jinder oh, Mahal. Okay. I, I do. I, I do not want to relive what 2017 all over again. I don't think you will. That was no. That was had, that did not have anything to do. Well, a little bit to do with gender, but there was a lot of things that were wrong about that, and I don't think gender was the major one. Anyway, we can discuss okay. that another time. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown round four, uh, Rudolph, Bobby Roode, and Dolph Ziggler, and Carmella. So here in this round, we split up Carmella and R-Truth. And for people wondering why they did that, people who are complaining and going, why, why, why? R-Truth is the 24-7 champ. He's basically, he is the 24-7 belt. Like, that's his gimmick at this point. Like, no one else's gimmick. That's his gimmick. And USA was the network that came up with the idea. So they wanted, needed, demanded the 24-7 championship stay there. And they weren't going to split up Carmella and Corey Graves. Corey Graves is on SmackDown. Yeah. So that's why 
they basically just the the weakest link was Carmella and our truth. So it sucks that 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 they're getting split up because they were very entertaining. But at the end of the day, yeah, the yeah. the business and the relationship came first. So that's why that happened. Uh, Raw round five: Samoa Joe, Akira Tozawa, and Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin. Mm. Uh, Akira Shelton. Tozawa. Th- this one. Th- th- so this one. Gender Mahal and, uh, frankly, Charlotte as a shocker going to where she went. But th- mm-hmm. those were just all of the- – so Gender Mahal, Akira Tozawa, uh, yes. R-Truth, Carmella were all drafted before The Miz and the guy that you just anointed king of the ring. Yeah, so, so fr- SmackDown, as you said, The Miz and King Corbin came in, like, bottom of the fifth round. That's where I uh, wanted to complain a little bit. <laughs> well, what's interesting is the Miz. So they had that leak, right? Where they leaked who was going where. Yeah. And um, the Miz was the, I think, the only person that they changed to be on SmackDown. I, I'm trying to remember who else it was. Someone, someone minor. But the Miz was supposed to be on Raw, and they switched that up. So they're like, oh, see, we still got you. Uh, so yeah, the Miz and King Corbin. Again, with the draft order, I feel like it's somewhat arbitrary. Like. They're trying to make some of these other stars look like bigger deals by going sooner, like Ricochet and um, Carrillo and Cedric Alexander. I think they're trying to you know, push them a little bit by having them go earlier. We already know what Corbin and Miz are, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's fair. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, as far as Tozawa, once we get to the end of this whole draft, I do want to point something out about Raw, but, and it includes him. But Okay. Uh, round six, Raw took Rey Mysterio. Titus O'Neil and Liv Morgan, everyone who thought that she was going to go with Bray Wyatt and be a part of the Firefly Funhouse. Uh oh. Eh, eh, cancel that. Liv Morgan's going to Raw. And then uh, the and also for SmackDown in round six, Gable, I refuse to call him by the name that they're calling him, although he did tweet out uh, SmackDown's going to get shorty, which was kind of funny. And uh, and Elias. Elias going last to SmackDown. So that was the draft for this week. I want to point out something before we give our thoughts on this, though, Nick. And that is, look at the men's division on Raw. Look who Paul Heyman, because Paul Heyman, reportedly, like, he gave a list of everyone he wanted. And he's like, SmackDown can take everybody else. These are the ones I want. And look who he has. He's got a really strong Latino division with Andrade Cien Almas and Rey Mysterio and Humberto Carrillo. You have a Rudo, you have a, a baby face, and you've got a legend all right there. So you can, and, and they've now it's come out. Um, actually, Meltzer reported this earlier today that there is the talk backstage that Carrillo is their next like big project. He's the next breakout Latino star. Andrade as well, but again, one's a baby face, one's a heel. Right. So they want to try and get them both over. Um, so that's one thing. You've also got. Other guys who can work their asses off on this on this brand. Ricochet, Alistair Black, Akira Tozawa, Buddy Murphy, Cedric Alexander. And then for big guys, you've got Drew McIntyre. Uh, and, oh, Kevin Owens went over there already. Also, yeah. Randy Orton. Like, Raw is, there, is crushing it right now. And that's not including the champs like Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. And like, Becky Lynch. And Becky Lynch. And Charlotte. I was, talking about, I was talking about the men's division. But the women's division... Right. No, women's division. Becky Lynch, Kabuki Warriors, Charlotte, Alexa Bliss, uh, Nikki Cross. Like, my God. My God. And the tag division. Street Profits, OC, and Viking Raiders are who we know they have right now. And there's a lot of, lot of and it, uh, from what I hear, AOP, who went undrafted, are going to Raw as well. Mm-hmm. Raw is stacked. Stacked. And I can only think, Nick, and I, I want to hear what you think about looking at this, looking at, I, gave, I sent you that list of everyone who's going yeah. everywhere, undrafted people. What do you think about the landscape post-draft? Like, so what I'm looking at this as three hours versus two hours as well. I'm yes, keeping that absolutely. in perspective. You're not going to need as many people for a two-hour show as you will for a three-hour show. You're going to need to have at least one or more, one or two storylines extra and an additional three to five superstars extra for the third for the three hour show. So it, it kind of makes sense from a from a proportional standpoint. Um, but at the same time, the level of I mean, I don't want to judge the level of talent. And if, it, if you look at SmackDown, Ali, King Corbin, Apollo Crews, Miz, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Bray Fiend, D- Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, also mostly um, 
uh, he's a, not talked he's a about. talker. He's a he's a he's a mouth. Sure. Mouth. He's not but a wrestler. You also anymore. also have two of the more pure wrestlers in Gable and Gulak over there now, uh, as well as Elias, the one real musical act, if you call him that, it, that you have in WWE at this point. So I'm, oh I'm yes, lo- and what an act it is. It's fantastic. It's some of the best heat in the company. It, I mean, I'm not going to downplay it. Yeah, it sure. was. It's cooling off majorly. Yeah, it is. Sure. Uh, whoever's fault that is, fine. But yeah, I'm, and then you throw block, 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 Brock Lesnar in there as well as the revival <laughs> over Brock on SmackDown. Lesner. Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. I mean, he already looks, like, Bork a, he looks Laser. like a Lego figure. Why not call him Brock Lesnar? <laughs> the star uh, of the next so, Lego movie. I I think from the level of if I'm looking at this, I think it's it's fairly even. Can Just someone make? Honest. I'm sorry to interrupt, Nick. I'm stuck on this now. Can someone actually make like a Lego? like parody YouTube video of Brock Lesnar dancing around to everything is awesome from the Lego movie. Hold everything it, is holding, awesome. holding the beast box. Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar. Everything <laughs> is. Awesome. All right. Sorry. Continue. Had a moment. Uh, no, I, I guess my, my conclusion to looking at that list is things are pretty even. I feel like it's pretty even across the board. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at, I mean, look at SmackDown. They've got, they've got less dudes. But they, it's no less caliber of talent. I think they have the most talent that has been misused by the company overall. Okay. Um, I think they had. I think the, like there's a lot of talent on SmackDown that the WWE has already kind of chewed up and spit out a little bit, and they're <laughs> okay. they're damaged. They're damaged, frankly. There's a lot of up and coming talent on Raw, and that's because Heyman has said he wants to get people over on Raw and have Raw be kind of like what SmackDown was, right? SmackDown makes them, Raw takes them, was what it was two years ago, where they get over on SmackDown and then Raw grabs them, right? That's Raw now. Now it's the feeder. Now that's SmackDown's the, the A show now. Huge. Make no mistake. It's on Make Fox no oh, prime no. time. Jesus. Brock, uh, Brock and Strowman and Bray Wyatt and Daniel and Roman. Bryan. Roman, absolutely. Yep. And Tamina. Um, <laughs> Can't forget her. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't, couldn't help it. Uh, no, that's, it's, it, it, the, the situations have reversed, but I just, I cannot help but look at that raw, uh, roster and just be like, they're, they're stacked. There's so many matchups I want to see on that. There's so many interesting matchups. There's so many things they could do there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm very excited for the future of raw. So on our way out of this segment, Nick, let's talk about people who are currently undrafted people who did not get picked up. Uh, as I said, AOP didn't, but it's all it's pretty much assumed they're going to go to Raw. Uh, Cesaro. Cesaro did not get picked up by either brand. I can't help but wonder if, I mean, either he's got some backstage heat going on right now, which I can't imagine he does because he's still getting some big opportunities for showcase matches. Yeah. But he's also not getting any pushes, really. Um, but I'm wondering because, you know, in one of the drafts, I think it was two or three drafts ago, he was very vocal about how disappointed he was and how low he went. And I'm wondering if this is them humbling him a bit by just Maybe. not drafting him at all. Maybe. And just saying, oh, you were unhappy last time? How about this time, dude? You know, take what you get, basically. Uh, I'm wondering if that's the case. Um, otherwise, I don't, I don't think that's excusable to, un, to not draft Cesaro, especially in the, you know, there's so many people I'm, I'm like, what? why didn't you draft these people? But uh, yeah, Kurt Hawkins, Zach Ryder didn't go drafted. That's not too surprising. Dana Brooke, Drake Maverick, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, Luke Harper, Mojo Rawley, No Way Jose, Sarah Logan, and the Iconics all went undrafted, which, yeah, for some of them, ouch. ouch yeah, ouch, I'm ouch. looking at Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville as well as the Iconics as well as Luke Harper going, as you know, it, right there beside AOP and Cesaro going, WTF, guys. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Fire and Desire, I imagine, will stay on SmackDown. Um, I think the they probably could have that be the same thing with the iconics too um although they might have to have some sort of something on raw to face the kabuki warriors i'm not sure they keep a uh, bliss and cross maybe but um yeah some of that's hmm. crazy people who uh, were not drafted because they were ineligible uh for either draft pool big show he's out with an injury still ember moon is out for the rest of the year and then some with her ankle injury uh jeff hardy's out because he's jeff hardy <laughs> he's got his he leg won't, he won't stop being Jeff Hardy. UI and getting berated <laughs> getting berated by Matt's wife on Twitter. I did Good hear Lord. also the um the Usos were not involved with this nor was Naomi 
And I heard directly that it's to do with Jimmy's issues. Jimmy's issues, yes. With his DUIs. And the shitty part about that is now directly affecting Naomi. Yeah, and, they're, and, they're, and their bottom line. They're also not getting any Saudi money either because they're having that big tag match in Saudi Arabia that they booked. The tag team turmoil, turmoil match, Usos, not booked for that either. Yep. So, Clean your shit up, dude. Yep. Stop that, well, I mean, ripping your shirt off and charging police, you know? Uh, also anyway. not eligible, Kane because he's a mayor, Lana, because she's too busy uh, banging Lashley, uh, Lars Sullivan, because he's out injured. Um, just going on the alphabetical here. Maria Kanellis. We'll get into her and Mike Kanellis in a second. Uh, Maurice on maternity leave. Matt Hardy, who knows what he's doing. Uh, some people suspect he might be going somewhere else. <laughs> Mickey James, uh, she's going to be a main event commentary. Mike Kanellis, we'll get to him in a second. Naomi, as you said, Nia Jax is still injured. Ruby Riot still injured for a while. Sheamus still injured, uh, apparently. As you said, the Usos are out. And then the Colognes and the Ascension, who haven't even been mentioned on WWE TV, are not part of the tag team turmoil. Nothing. The Ascension have like vanished into thin air. I don't know what happened to them. So those are yeah. all the people that are not going anywhere, as we know yet. Yep. So. Well, hey, before we go too much further, I do want to give a shout out to Nicholas Yates for the dollar in the tip jar. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. sir. Thank Love you very the much. Love support. Sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Promise. Oh, so uh, the way you've got the notes laid out here, um, we're going to go right to the end. <laughs> Uh, okay. This is, uh, I, I don't know if I was ready to talk about this yet. We, I have to talk about this. First of all, I, I, I have say, to prepare myself. Do you, notice, do you notice the NBC, uh, commentary all over this? We yeah. had like, like, it was, uh, 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 Saturday Night Jim Live. Jim Kramer and Jim Kramer and why was uh, Jeremy Roenick on my wrestling program? That's what I want to know. Because USA is owned by NBC Universal. So like on Friday, you had all the Fox oh. personalities. On Monday, you got all the NBC personalities. So, And the, I think NBC <laughs> won. They definitely had more people that, that were recognizable. And also, they were more fun segments this time. They actually got them to talk about wrestling, not just about the people, that, the things that are actually happening in WWE. And not just like, oh, yeah, I watched Pressler Pro Wrestling once upon a time. I used to love Hulk Hogan and Under the Giant. Okay, back to you. You know, so, yeah. Way to go, NBC. Much better than Fox's. Uh, well played. What do we well call done. it? Celebrity endorsements, whatever right. you want to call it. All right. Yep. We're going to the end of the show, Nick. We're going. It started off going throughout the entire show. Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt still having issues. Seth saying he's going to go fiend hunting. Oh. And at the end of the show, Seth found himself a fiend, or rather, not the fiend. He found Bray Wyatt. He didn't just find Bray Wyatt. He found the Firefly Funhouse, which what? is strange. I didn't know it was a actual physical space somewhere that was in the arena that Seth could get to. It's it's a Hashtag table with a backdrop. W you know? Hashtag <laughs> WWE logic. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Seth found it. Beats up Bray, Bray Wyatt, who is crying and asks, you know, begging Seth not to do it. Starts like crying and Seth still beats him up and then whispers to himself, burn it down. And then he does. He literally burns down the Firefly Funhouse, almost as though he was taking notes from Randy Orton and whatever creative geniuses thought it was a good idea to burn down Bray's shack in his previous incarnation. So these geniuses thought the best way to get over their number one baby face was to have him attack a, a crying, pleading Mr. Rogers clone and then burn down a physical space uh, to a chorus of boos, yeah. by the way. And then in the dark match after the show went off the air where he had a match against Bray, which ended in DQ, uh, the, he got booed oh, out of the building. Oh, God. Booed I out of the building. I didn't even hear about that. Oh, what no. What is their obsession with destroying Bray Wyatt and making their top baby faces look like goons? What is going on here? Do you have some insight, Nick? Talk me off the ledge here. Uh, I because have, I've I been have, on this. I have, I have no insight. I've I, got I, PTSD I, for the last few years of them ruining Bray Wyatt. And it's happening again, man. Yep. It's happening it, it, again. They, we know they listen, so I'm going to look directly at you guys. You should have kept it in your pants. And none of oh, this would uh, have happened. So, small, interesting, uh, quick beep, 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 newsflash, newsflash. Eric Elledge, I guess, is watching backstage right now. Uh, he's in the chat. He says, Bliss and Cross were just traded to SmackDown. Ooh. Interesting. As together, because they were drafted individually. So did, did does Raw get two back for the trade? How ridiculous is this? First, first Raw wastes two picks on both Bliss and Cross, and then they just trade them away. And then they trade them away for what? <laughs> I want to know who they got what in exchange. Are you doing? 
What are you doing? Oh my god! Just, I, just, I can't. I mean, they had time. They had time with this draft. They had time. They knew they weren't doing it the day of. They had time to plan this. They apparently had this written. Down. Nick, what? <laughs> oh god! Oh my god! Oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to make like Alvarez and fall out of my seat here in a second. Oh my God. Oh, Why? <laughs> All right. They're making USA execs look like idiots. Back to oh. Seth Rollins burning down the fiend house. Okay. We have a lot yes, to discuss let's, there. Let's... <laughs> this was, it's like you said, I want to repeat what you said. Oh. Take your top baby face in the company, your current universal oh. champion who you basically just made look like an idiot coming off the back of hell in a cell little over a week ago, uh, and now you're going to take him and you're going to set fire to right. a nebbish Mr. Rogers right. character with his puppets was, and him still in the place. It was the most over thing you had, and you're literally going to burn it down. They're li- <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 wait. Nobody liked the fist of hell in a cell? I'll do it again. I'll, I'll, I'll screw you guys over again. How no, about no. that? Before Who's I do like that, that, though, I'm, I'm going to burn the Firefly Funhouse down. Right. And then I'm going to DQ him again at the in the dark match. So you guys, and none then, of you can then, watch it. You'll just have to read about it, and you'll sit there and fume and rrr, get on your podcast. And then and we're going to have a Falls Count Anywhere match in Saudi Arabia that's really going to suck. Right. How about that, guys? Would you like that? How about that in your cereal? How about that? Big old Vincey Daddy's going to poop in your cereal. How do you like that? Oh, my God. Yeah. I... Huh, I'm trying to see an upside here, Nick. I'm, There's not I'm one. genuinely trying to like wrap my head around the hashtag WWE logic of this. And so I if, can't. Well, here's the thing. If if, if there's again, one thing was missing. Much like the Hell in a Cell match, there was like one thing missing. The fact that it was a DQ. Only or, one? Well, let's get let's look past the fact that they DQ'd a Hell in a Cell match. Let's try to okay. do that for a second. Oh, sorry, by, by the way, it's been clarified on Twitter. Seth Rollins went on Twitter to tell us all it was ref stoppage. Not a DQ. He Fine. can stop the match if the body isn't moving. Fine. Because because that's always stopped Hell in a Cell matches. Right. When the body right. stops moving, you stop the Hell in a Cell match. It's not about making Mick your opponent Foley not be able to move. fell through the top after being thrown off the top onto the announce table. So I don't want to hear that shit. He came back and they restarted the match. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 book a match where the whole point is to make your opponent so incapable of moving that you can pin them. But then stop the match when the before body you're stops able to moving. do so. Right. <laughs> so end this segment I'm with delirious. Seth burning down the Firefly Funhouse. Oh. Had it somehow, uh, had that action torn down the safe space walls of what is the Firefly Funhouse? Right. And the fiend had manifested somehow. Now that Seth had set it on fire. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you gotta tell me a story though. Well, maybe they're, on, waiting, maybe they're waiting to give us the other half of the story later. The in Saudi is, Arabia? What's that? <laughs> in maybe Saudi week, Arabia? <laughs> Something. I don't know. I don't know. Here's the, here's the other thing that I have, I have heard. And that is that, that Fox was not a fan of the Firefly Funhouse segments. And if you watch the executives' reactions on the premiere episode of Friday Night SmackDown, that might lend some credence. But, it, I mean, you don't fight for one of the best things going in your company. Why, why would you want to, why, if you're Fox, why do you want to have Bray on Friday or is Paul just distancing himself from it? Cause he realizes the ship is sinking. Why do you want Bray, but not all of Bray's gimmick? Look, there's so much incomprehensible here. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the problem. I don't have, I think Seth is a fantastic wrestler. I think he's been a great baby face. I think their booking of him has been awful. I don't think this is Seth's fault. I don't think he's reacted too well on Twitter to a lot of this, but at the same time, I get being defensive, um, but this is absolutely creative. I lay this completely at the feet of creative and Vince McMahon. This is this is insanity, insanity, and history yep. is repeating itself. Yep. This is exactly how they destroyed Bray Wyatt's previous character was overexposure was was uh, not playing by the rules that he's establishing for this character. Oh, it's been three um, years though; they've forgotten about all that stuff. Now, go ahead and just set it on fire again. Destroying the mystique. Of of a well created character, I, it's just it, it hurts. It hurts, and it's I, I absolutely feel like history is repeating itself. Uh, maybe they can pull the plane up once he and Seth are done with their program, but right now they are heading towards a mountaintop. I have they're, one thing to say about this whole segment before we move on, and it's just my my stamp on the whole thing 
is just yowie wowie. That's yowie that's wowie. Just Jesus Christ, Vince. Yowie wowie. I think it, I'm actually going to change that. Yowie. Owie. 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 Hashtag Owie. Owie. Nick, let's go to something that I know is going to make you happy. Let's cleanse our palates here and talk about a tag team match. A tag team match on Raw, which usually when we get to the tag division on Raw, we're screaming and yelling and foaming at the mouth. But this week, Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler had a match with the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And the Viking Raiders won. Viking Raiders, your new Raw Tag Team Champions. And it's so I can tell you're so happy, Nick, that you didn't even correct me about their name. It's War Machine. Mm-hmm. And War, 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 <laughs> War, War, War. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, they did it's mention something. Row. They did have a backstage little promo uh, later in the show. Yep. Uh, I like this set that they're doing this on, by the way. Whatever that red backdrop is, and it, good <laughs> God, it just makes me think of you know pillaging. It's exactly what I was just fire and brimstone and right. pillaging and all this. Is, yes, Vikings. All right, war they're, machine. They're Go get them. The hell, they're pointing one of the hell of the cell red lights at the camera and just letting them stand in front of it. But okay, whatever. If it works for you, great. It works your for boys. me. Yes, it they're works for me. Um, uh, they did call out, however, during that promo. They said the words IWGP and Ring of Honor. And I went, whoa, that yeah. crosses some boundaries that we haven't really heard that much of before. I love that. They said we've been uh, – now they did – I haven't researched this, so I don't know how, uh, how accurate this is or if they threw in this little caveat as a way to get it over. Um, I don't believe that they are the first team to hold IWGP, Ring of Honor, NXT – and WWE championships. It might be because of the NXT caveat. They also threw in that they're the first undefeated team in WWE to hold all those titles. I have to go back and research that. I'm, I want to say there's another one. But hmm. the NXT thing might be the, the thing that throws it, is that they're including NXT in that, uh, in that lineup of titles that they've held. But let's be clear. That's, that is a hell of an accolade, and the fact that WWE let them say that is really cool. It is. It's it is really cool. And that's like it's it's 2019. Long... We're getting progressive even in our wrestling at this point. Hell right? yeah. Oh so. my god. I remember the days where you couldn't talk about any of the other companies and it would under like even when AJ got there, he couldn't say what he really did everywhere else, right? He they were saying, "Oh, he's been around the world." It's like, "Yeah, he's been a champion everywhere he went." Yeah, you know that Finn Balor well, we guy you got he he unseated him. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I uh, wish they could talk about that more. Him and Nakamura, they couldn't really, they still couldn't really talk about that. So I'm really happy that they let them say that. Um, just, yeah, I wonder if that's Heyman. I really do. Everything that's good, I start wondering if it's Heyman. Look, <laughs> as, as excited as I am about this victory and this this title reign for them, uh, I fully expect Ziggler and Rude to come right back and do They got drafted silly. to SmackDown. They ain't going nowhere. Thank God. Yes. Yeah, no, you. That's what I said. Is on on Raw now. You got the OC and the Street Profits who look like they're getting into a feud. We'll get into that in a second. You got the fully Viking Raiders. I expect AOP to come to Raw as well, and I am salivating at AOP the opportunity versus of those Viking three Raiders. four teams. Lord and I, and and the Good Brothers. <laughs> I I wonder if they're going to be able to put AOP against Viking Raiders right now, where you've got two teams that need to be dominant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I neither one of them should be losing matches at no, this point. No. So that worries me. A Bring bit, in but. some other undercard tag teams of some sort and let them just beat the hell out of them for for the sure. time being. Yeah, but that's know? what they did for the last like couple months with Viking Raiders. They were squashing dudes and no one's people started not caring. True. So no, bring in a legit tag team. Yeah. Call up, call them up if you have to. Trade them from SmackDown. You know, send you're sending Bliss and Cross to SmackDown. Get Heavy Machinery back on Raw. Yeah, Something street, like that. Street Profits. They don't. They they can stay over and still lose. I think. They for, absolutely for, can, but they look like they're going into the OC, so we'll see. Uh, um, just we'll to, see. We'll see. To wrap this up, I do want to call out the Vikings fan in the front row. You're wearing a Vikings jersey. You're obviously lost because you're in Denver, Colorado, so I don't know if you took a, a left turn at Albuquerque or what happened, but you're sitting there, and the Viking Raiders are out there, and you're, people are starting a, a war chant. They're cheering the Vikings, you know, go Viking Raiders. And you're just sitting there. At you're least get up Vikings and jersey, at least bro. get up and yell scorn or something. You know, just you something. Know, Come a, on, a mug of meat or something. Just do a, a giant turkey leg that you can get at every venue ever. Yeah, you know, do something Viking if you're gonna maybe be maybe you're in a Viking because jersey. Denver isn't as cold as Minnesota right now. I don't know, but 
At least he got up at the end in each year. So I'll give him a pass. Give yeah. him a pass. All right. Vikings fans. God. Yeah. Vikings. God. God, <sighs> Vikings. Keep my Raiders. Bastards. That's still one of the best uh, Bud Light commercials ever done. Got to go to that stupid wedding reception. We'll call in a team of Vikings to come in and tear up the party. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Vikings. <laughs> this is where, that this is where Nick goes on his tangents. This yes. is where Nick goes on his tangents. Yeah. I Okay. Moving on, Braun Strowman and Nick Fury. Nick Fury, Tyson Fury. I wish it were Nick Fury. That would be a lot better than this crap because instead we had Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury staring at each other over a table, trading awkward uh, promos, and then Braun smashes the table and Tyson Fury has a difficult time breaking a pen and then walks off smiling. Uh, what did you think about this, Nick? Braun's your uh, boy. What are they What are they doing to him? Uh, it, it's... Look, I want to look at this glass half full and skeptically optimistic, as I always do. I always try to, at least. Braun is being put in this spotlight alongside Brock Lesnar in these two sort of exhibition matches. Um, yes. And, and, and he, regardless of what you think about Saudi Arabia, uh, it's there's an opportunity here in these spotlight feature exhibition matches for Braun Strowman to do this. They could have picked anybody to do this with Tyson Fury. They picked Braun. Uh, yes. the, I'm looking at this as an opportunity for him to get really over, uh, have a big resurgence. Uh, maybe something comes out of it. I don't know. I, there, everything is changing with what, what is going on at crown jewel. So I don't know what to think of it at this point. All I can say is that Braun Strowman's getting to do a cool exhibitional thing. And I, you know, think about it that way. They're bringing in someone like Tyson Fury, the world heavyweight boxing champion, we could go back and compare lineal, it to lineal, Floyd. Floyd. Fine. We could go back and we could talk about Floyd Mayweather and Big Show. Or we could go back and we could talk about Tyson and Stone Cold. It's just another one of those, in my opinion, for this generation and this time uh, this time period. I don't, I don't look Tyson, at it any different than that. Tyson didn't bury anybody. And, and Big Show looked like a goon losing to a guy who's the size of one of his legs. He's also and got a really high-pitched voice that's awkward and weird. And he beats women and can't read. But that's a, that's Floyd Mayweather. We're not talking about him. Oh, yeah. We're talking, we're talking about another uh, misanthropic asshole, and that's Tyson Fury. Yeah. Uh, let's be clear. Braun Strowman is not winning this match. It may be uh, – they may have something where they call back to Fury's last boxing match, and it's a draw, which is going to make nobody happy. Or Tyson Fury could beat him. Tyson Fury, they, they like to underline that he's undefeated. Braun Strowman's not handing him a loss on this one. Okay. They're also paying Tyson Fury in the realm of $15 million. Why? To go to Saudi Arabia and beat Braun Strowman. Because the this Saudis not... want Tyson Fury or because WWE suggested this would be a cool thing? Uh, that's where I'm, I, I'm struggling to make sense of it. I think the Saudi Arabians, if, if history is any indicator, they probably asked for Mike Tyson and WWE <laughs> thought they said Tyson Fury. <laughs> Mike Tyson and, don't box no more. Yeah. No, he's, he's raised with pigeons. Yeah. Um, but no, this is this is the thing is that they're they're paying Tyson a ton of money to go out there. Um, he's making a huge paycheck from this. And Braun Strowman's gonna make a huge paycheck from this sure. as well, I imagine. Nowhere near the same amount, but they're gonna he's gonna get beat. I and can see him yes, walking gonna, away with a few mil out of this. But they're he's not going to win this. And so in terms of perception, not that many people are gonna watch these Saudi events here in the States. Enough will that it's I mean, they're they're I don't know if they're going to go out of their way to protect Braun on this. I really don't. And that's not a good look for him. Wow. So, yeah, I, I this whole thing, I get why they're doing it. It's business. Yeah. But once again, it's Vince being obsessed with other famous people outside of his company and burying his own dudes to try and get those big hits on YouTube, you know, and somehow it, he thinks it's an attraction. Pal. Fifteen million dollars. Can you imagine what they could do with that fifteen million dollars? I yeah. mean, now that they've, their pockets are so full, they're just writing these checks. Kane, Velasquez, and Tyson Fury writing those checks, writing those checks. Madness. It's absolutely madness. In the NFL, they call this a retirement contract, where you, Psh. yeah, that's basically what Kane Velasquez just got, guys. In in the NFL, Al Davis runs your team into the ground. In the, in wrestling, Vince McMahon runs your whole company into the ground. Yeah. That's the difference. Albert with the uh, dollar in the tip jar. Thank you very much, Thank Albert. you. Thank you very thank much, Thank you guys Albert. for showing up awesome. tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a sip of beer for the working man for that one. Hell yeah. Uh, next up, we had, uh, let's see, where were we? There it is. All right. 
The OC beat up the Street Profits. So we had a backstage segment with the Street Profits announcing, doing their thing, doing, their thing, doing what they do. Doing their thing. And in walks the OC, AJ Styles congratulating them and saying, yeah, but this is our house. The OC's here. Raw is ours. And mm-hmm. they didn't take too kindly to that. But the OC start to turn and walk off and then turn around and attack the Street Profits. Um, I don't know if this is what I would have set up first, but I ain't mad at it. If, if you look at the, the meta of all of this post-draft, you like we were saying before, you've got Viking Raiders as champions. You've got the OC, i.e. the Good Brothers in there as a tag team with AJ in their corner. And you've yep. got uh, AOP potentially coming over. And who is the, who's the one I'm missing? Uh, Viking Raiders. Oh, they're the champions. Yep. So that, who's the fourth one that I'm missing? The, Street anyway. Profits. We don't have the fourth one. Street Profits, so OC, uh, Viking Raiders. Oh, and I was saying AOP. Possibly AOP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, set this up. Let's start having legit tag matches. Get Rudolph out of the way. I'm I'm all in on what this new four man four team tag division on Raw right now. Interestingly enough, they had originally scheduled a three on three tag match at the end of Raw, and they kind of teased it where the Street Profits were back after getting beat up by the OC. They were backstage looking for OC, and yeah. finally said, "We can't find them, so we'll say this to the camera." We're going to get you guys, and we'll find like a third dude to tag with us. And then they just left it there. So I guess I guess they felt like they did, where there wasn't enough time to do a good match this week, so they're putting it off for next week. Okay, fine, fine. Sure. I, no problem with that. Give them time. I want to see this match. Yes. I want to see Good Brothers Street Profits. I want to see the Street Profits actually get in the ring and wrestle and stop doing this minstrel show they're doing backstage. Um, so, yes, let's, let's see that. Um, bleh, that being said... Uh, I'm I'm excited for that. As you said, I'm, uh, the tag division has a lot of potential. Let's see some more guys come there, and I think we're going to get some really good matches. Yes. So, and I also, I mean, I even with within our our group, our listeners, there, I've heard a lot of people frustrated with how the Street Profits are being presented. So the turn this week from them being goobers to them feeling like they they're a little bit more intense, I like that. More of that. Get away from them being backstage and running down the show. In like, oh, it's it's a you know, very hip, very the kids love this kind of lingo kind of presentation. Let's get them out in the ring. Let's have them be a little bit like kind of like what they were in NXT, where it was just enough of everything, right? Yeah. They didn't go too overboard, like Vince is having them do. Um, Nick, I'm gonna need you to explain this next one to me. I can't. I have no explanation. The Kabuki Warriors defended their uh, women's tag team titles against the team of Natalia and the partner of her choice. Lacey Evans, who apparently is being billed as a kind of a face now because they worked face in this match. Okay. What? They just, Natalia and Lacey were trying to kill each other for the last few weeks, and now they're best buds, and Lacey's a face? What? What? Also, Lacey, um, still kind of botchy. There is a debate as to whether it was Lacey's fault or uh, Kyrie's fault, but there was a headlock takedown slash face buster thing pretty early in the match where Lacey tried to take down uh, Kyrie and Carrie basically just DDT'd herself. It looked really ugly and a little dangerous. And about 30 seconds later, they're outside the ring and Kyrie basically backfisted Lacey in the face for real and dropped her from an outsider looking in. It looked like a botch and a receipt, but obviously unless you're in there, there's no way to tell. But I do have to say that's really what it looked like to yeah. me. And people were debating uh, if if Kyrie just didn't pancake at the right time, or if it was miscommunication, or if Lacey just went down and took her with her, or what was going on. But uh, yeah, that was an ugly spot in this match. And then there was just a lot of Natalia selling, selling, selling. So yeah, I, that's my reaction. I don't know. What too. Is, uh, what? <laughs> Next, not not my favorite match of the week. No, I was um, disappointed. What was the intent here? I don't really know. Uh, to to keep the Kabuki Warriors on TV, to have them defend the titles, which I'm fine with. I'm I'm a fan of those two mantras in general. Have your champs on TV. Have them defending their titles. Good. I'm in for that. I have no idea what the hell after back to back to back to back to back to back 27 times Natalia versus Lacey Evans. All of a sudden, they're a tag team now. I, I there is no formula in the world that makes any kind of sense that uh, that that makes that does not compute. I have no idea. I have no idea. And and Natty tried. Natty, to her credit, she came out and said, I wanted to face off against the tag team champions, but I didn't have a partner. So I went and picked the only person that I could think of, the woman that's been giving me a hard time the last few weeks, and Lacey. What? 
Like, there's no other women left. You have you. That's the one person. Okay. And and now all of a sudden, Lacey's working faced against a, a heel tag team. I have no words for what they've been doing and using Natalia for in the la- uh, most of this year, frankly. But I I'm, I'm not enjoying any of it. The Lacey mm. Evans stuff was a fun experiment with Becky post Mania. Fun experiment. Sure. You know how high I was on Lacey Evans and NXT, right? I, I thought that. I thought that we would uh, get more out of that, but it just... Eh. I'm, gl- I'm glad you had fun with it. I had to drink my way through it. I understand. I understand oh. it didn't turn out the way we all thought it would, or for some of us, right? I like I like the... I, I'm sticking with the phrase, Nat- Natty tried. Yeah. It's my favorite Merle Haggard song, so I'm going to go with that. Mama <laughs> tried, mama tried. Mama tried. She couldn't save this crap. I will say this. Love Asuka going for the Kana look with the with the crying, the green, and the... Oh, yeah. Creepy and the green Asuka. lipstick, yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I uh, love it. Demon Oscar is best Oscar. Demon Connor, love bring it. it back. Bring, bring it back. It. Continue, continue. Split up the Kabuki Warriors. You have them on the same program. Oscar Becky, do it. Book it. Let it happen. Let Oscar go evil. Bring it to me now. Does she turn on Kyrie Sane at some point and just green Don't mister? Care. Yep. They've Don't got care to break that up. Kyrie is the weak link there. As much as we love Hojo. Uh, I just don't feel I, the same way that I did back when Hojo love, was Hojo. She's a face. She's a natural baby face. What are you doing? I agree. I, Why I is she her, on a heel I tag love team? Her little, yeah, <laughs> great. Uh, a couple more things that were not on Hulu. Uh, Andrade Cien Almas and Ali had a match. Andrade won. Um, I would just like to say that I wish this had some stakes to it, like winner gets all their whole name back or something like that, but no. <laughs> Yes. It was just kind of a. It was just kind of a remember these guys match, along with every other remember these guys match they had on Raw that wasn't on Hulu, like Alistair Black beating Eric Young, Ricochet beating Shelton, Benjamin, uh, Buddy Murphy beating Cedric Alexander in a 2017 Cruiserweight Championship rematch, and uh, yeah, I wonder because a lot of these guys are all going to be on Raw, so I'm wondering if they're setting up any feuds or just kind of you know circling that. Circling that airport with the plane until it was time to land. I This but, is uh, the best I think I've liked Aleister Black's look and presence since he's come up to the main roster. It's I, well, that w- it get, was intense this week. Leave with him Aleister alone, Black. Vince. Yeah. Give him Paul. 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 Come on. Help him. Uh, Help him. Ricochet looked great with Shelton. I mean, Shelton's a natural God gifted oh, wrestler. Amazing. He's just amazing. incredible. And put him and Ricochet together and they're just they're going to be lights out. And Buddy and Cedric, I'm never going to be mad at a match there as long as they let them work. Just turn those two loose, and they're going to be fantastic. So, right. yeah, um, I, I I hate that these weren't on the Hulu edition because they were, frankly, some of my they're favorite great. matches of the week, or at least yeah. of Raw last night, I should say. Um, but, yeah. That's the week. That's the week so there we far. Go. So, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, worth, worth a watch, but all of them just kind of there. But the fact that all of these guys are on the same brand is what gives me hope. Um, I just think, uh, most of these guys are in the same band. So that's, that gives me hope. There's a lot of guys here. I would love to see just kind of keep bouncing off each other, have some matches. Hopefully at some point in the future, they'll have some meaning to the matches and then it'll be even better. Yes. Uh, speaking. And also, like I said, Alistair Black with Paul Heyman, like if they go TV 14, Alistair Black with Paul under Paul Heyman, I'm all for it. Mm. The TV 14 stuff I could do without is yet another Lana and Bobby Lashley segment this time in a massage parlor. And I really don't want to talk about it more than that. Yep, it was, that was just it. as uncomfortable as cr- and cringy as you would imagine. Uh, Bobby Lashley still acting like a shy little schoolboy around Lana uh, for some weird oh, reason. It's so, so the whole cringy. Thing is so uncomfortable. It's so bad. It's so it's so bad. It's so bad. Die. That angle needs to die. 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 Yes. Hate it. So, some good stuff on Raw. Some really really god awful. Sh- get a shovel. Bad stuff on Raw. But uh, hell of a hell of a week, man. Some crazy changes happening in WWE, and I actually am excited to see what they do now yeah. that the rosters are set. That we've got a real tag potential. division now. We've got some real yep. talent on both of the rosters. Uh, yes. It seems like the the wrestlers are on Raw, and the soap opera stars, if I call them that, are kind of are over on SmackDown. That's kind of Not the way I'm that. weighing it up, and I think that works out well with Fox being prime time and Raw being a big three-hour, hopefully turning into a wrestling show again. 
Uh, uh-huh. So we'll see. To be determined at this point. But that was Raw, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to head over now and talk about the rest of things that went down in the wide world of wrestling. Well, I'll tell you what, Nick, uh, not a lot has happened in the wide world since our last show on Saturday, but we did have a major New Japan show. King of Pro Wrestling was just a day and a half ago. Mm. And I got to say, it varied wildly between be- between being wildly predictable and being one of the most mind-blowingly unpredictable shows of the year. For example, we were supposed to have a match between John Moxley and Juice Robinson for Moxley's U.S. title. And Off I think the everyone's G1, right? Off the whole thing, the whole yep. angle since Moxley's first match when he destroyed Juice, this was going to be the payoff match, right? Where they paid off all of this. But no, thanks to Typhoon Hagibis, Hagibis? Hagibis. Thanks to the typhoon that was over Japan, Moxley not able to make the show, and New Japan stripped him of the title and made a last-minute substitution. Instead of Moxley, we had your boy... Lance Archer step in against Juice Robinson and beat him. Lance Archer is your new U.S. champion in New Japan. Yes. My mind explode, Nick. Mine Uh, doesn't because look at that G1 that Lance Archer had and compare it to the one that Juice Robinson had. Juice Robinson might have been the better story, but Lance Archer was arguably the standout uh, of up and comer of the entire G1 this year. And oh, yeah. I was blown away as anybody when they when they put Archer uh, the U.S. title on Archer. But I have zero just zero negative things to say about it. Well earned, sir. Well earned, indeed. Wild, that, just wild, crazy stuff. Yeah. So that's that's so Lance Archer's your new U.S. champ. Uh, it goes to show what a good performance in the G1 can do for you. If you go there and just blow it up. In New Japan, they will reward you. And I like the way that they built the story, too, where at the end, Archer was beating the crap out of Juice because he had he had insisted it would be a no-DQ match just like the Moxley match. Right. And um, murder Juice, and at the end, David Finley had to come back from injury and save Juice. If you Last week, we talked a little bit, I think, on the Mailbag Show about the promo style they have in New Japan and how amazing Juice Robinson is. Yeah. Uh, and this was another example of that, where he just was like a broken man. After this match, and his his promo that he gave backstage after this match was amazing. All I can think uh, about is Obi Wan yelling at Anakin, going, "You were the chosen one. <laughs> it was supposed to be you." Yeah, where he's what crying. Happened? He's literally crying and saying, "I wish Moxley were here." Like, wow, it was oh. amazing. Good, good stuff for me. That was one of the highlights of the uh, of the whole thing. Another one came a different part in the show. But also uh, delayed and, and then canceled by the Typhoon, Zack Sabre Jr. wasn't able to make it either for his match, which was made into uh, from a three-on-three into a two-on-two. So it wasn't as big of a deal, right. but Zack Sabre Jr. also was not able to make the show. And apparently everyone who's coming in from like Australia and even like New Zealand, like nearby, they were worried they weren't going to make it. Kevin Kelly like got there as the show started. Like it, that Typhoon messed them up. Bottom floor of the dojo is flooded. Like it's, it messed them up. Um, but thoughts, the show thoughts went to on. Uh, Japan. Hope you guys are seriously, doing okay over there. Seriously. Um, but the other major like point of the show, part of the show for me, was Jushin Thunder Liger mm. and his match with Minoru Suzuki. He, we did not see Kishin Liger again. Uh, probably understandable given the outcome of the whole match. But we did see Battle Liger, which is his more like lucha inspired costume, where he's topless and he's got a mask and it looks awesome. But uh, this was a just beat him up, slobber knocker. Minoru Suzuki eventually got the gotch pile driver, put him down, one, two, three, and then got emotional afterwards. And so did Liger. After Suzuki gave him the ring, uh, Liger said, you know, thank you, Suzuki. And it was a little bit of feels. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready for January when Liger actually retires. Like, this has been one of the best retirement tours I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Aside from that, like I said, the show was pretty predictable. Ibushi retained his uh, briefcase for Wrestle Kingdom. Osprey retained his uh, junior heavyweight belt in a just like ricochet style flippy shit match <laughs> that you need to see to believe 
those guys, El Fantasmo and him, just were all like all over the place. Well, superhero what did you style. What expect with those two? Of course, it's going to be that. That's exactly no. It's exactly what yeah. I expected. Anyone who doesn't like flippy stuff, just don't watch the match. If you like acrobatics, that match is for you. Yes, it's crazy. Um, not a single amount of believable offense, and I don't care. I, excuse no. me, I take that back. He did do the hidden blade, and that looked like he knocked El Fantasmo into another dimension. Oh God. Uh, okay. <laughs> But it was a really fun match. Okada also retains against Sonata. No surprise there. So we have official Ibushi will face Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. No more matches between now and then. No more title matches. So that will happen. Um, power struggles coming up before then, though. Ishii is challenging Kenta for his never open weight belt, which he, which Ishii lost to Kenta back right. in August. Uh, Goto is challenging Jay White for the IC belt. Nice try, Goto. This is like your role. It's to challenge yep. dudes who are going to go and have a title match much later on, just yep. to keep things rolling. Uh, Naito and Taichi are having a match because why not? Taichi's insulting Naito, and hey, it's something for the both of them to do. And then the tag match, Okada and Yoshihashi, Mr. Personality himself, versus Kota Ibushi and Tanahashi. That's going to be a nice tag match. Mm, that'll be good. Uh, Nick, I, I think they finally showed their hand. Okay, because Okada, what do you got? Okada, Okada, Okada has just said, that he is okay with defending the IWGP heavyweight belt on both nights of Wrestle Kingdom. What? So you know how the conspiracy goes that after Wrestle Kingdom, someone will be holding both the Wrestle Kingdom belt, the, excuse me, the, the heavyweight belt, and the IC belt. Like that's the big story they're building. Yeah. Jay White wants both belts. Naito has said he wants both belts. Ibushi, Ibushi says says he he wants both belts. And Okada said, you know what? Everyone else wants it. I'm the best. I'm gonna try to do it too. That now looks like if Okada is going to defend his belt on both nights, there's several different ways they could get those like that and the IC belt on the same person. Who do you so, think it's going to be at this point? What's your gut telling you? My gut is telling me Jay White, but then there's also a little guy in the back of my head that says maybe this is a giant swerve for Naito, and mm. that's why they're burying so hard right now where he could come out of this. Bushi loses to Okada on night one. Naito beats Jay White challenges Okada day, day two, and somehow Naito gets both belts in two days. See, so my, I'm, I'm sticking with my Abushi thing that started before the G1. I think with his big signing the boy. and his commitment and his run through the G1, even with that nasty ankle turn that he had uh, in the Osprey match, but just, oh right. my God. And he's still got this opportunity. I think they're going to, I'm going to ride Abushi off the cliff. It was frankly. the Kenta match. Kenta match. The Kenta match. Thank you very yeah, much. I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. I, I um, just, I'm all, I think they're all in on Ibushi, so I'm all in on Ibushi at this point. You know who shouldn't hold both belts? Who? Okada. Okada should <laughs> not. Anybody absolutely. But Anybody but Okada should hold both, like, Jay White, okay, give it to the heel, I understand, you know, they've been, they've been talking about that for a while. Fine. Ibushi deserves it. Uh, you know, he's become a company boy, and everyone loves him. Could see that. Naito, dear God, they need to do like Naito has earned it time and time again. And after the way they screwed him against Okada at Wrestle Kingdom, he needs a redemption arc. And that would be like the biggest one ever. So, yeah. 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 I, I it makes me very a sight. Very a sight. So I was under the impression that Jushin Thunder Liger, the, the match with Monoru Suzuki was going to be his final retirement match. Is that not the case? Jushin Th so Jushin Thunder Liger is actually having two retirement matches. Okay. He's having one on each night of Wrestle Kingdom. Night oh, one, he's okay. having. We don't know who he's facing. Tanahashi, at least on Suzuki. one of them. Again. Um, he just did Suzuki. Suzuki's done. Oh, okay. I, so I thought he might do it again, but okay. I, I have a feeling he's going to call out someone really old school, and someone might actually come out of retirement or something. Shibata. Um, oh, no. I don't think it would be Shibata. No? Okay. No, 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 no. Not out of injury. No, no, no. But, um, but yeah, I think that, that one of those nights it'll be Tanahashi. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Uh, but he's, he's doing two, and then there will be an actual retirement ceremony uh, on day three on the 6th. So that's Jushin's out right there. Mm, okay. So, so far, Wrestle Kingdom looking, looking very strong indeed. The only thing I also have to wonder is, is Moxley done with New Japan now? Because if so, he never got that Suzuki match. Although, theoretically, Suzuki has said he wants to leave New Japan, or it's being rumored that he wants to leave New Japan. Uh, so maybe there's another way. I don't know. I would love to see Moxley Suzuki would love that. Oh my goodness. Yes. Would love it. Would love it. Give me that. So that is new Japan for the week. Yes. Uh, NWA power power. 
<laughs> also aired right before the show went on, so I have had a hard time. I didn't get a chance to watch it because I was scrambling to get the show written, and I don't. I can't find any notes online about the results, but I do know they had a couple of debuts on the show. So if you don't want to be spoiled, cover your ears for the next thirty seconds. La, 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 uh, la, 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 la. NWA oh, yeah. Power debuting Aaron Stevens, formerly known as Damian Sandow. Nice. De- debuted on the show and uh, told <laughs> so, like no eye contact, please. Uh, so new, new, new gimmick for him. Someone with the same old gimmick, though. Colt Cabana announced his tag team partner will be Mr. Kennedy. Oh, okay. So Mr. Kennedy also an NWA now. So oh. that I do know. That I do know. And then I'll try to give the rest of the results on our Saturday show, Nick. That's all I have right now, sadly, nice. because that is just it's just it just cut it cut too close. Cut too close to our show. Too much. And I don't have any updates on the uh, baseball playoff game that's happening right now either. But this is a wrestling <laughs> show, and wrestling that show, was no? uh, the wide world of wrestling. But, Ian, we're not done just we've already, yet. We've already – hold on. We've already had oh. too much talk about football and baseball. We can't do any more. Yeah. I will and say hockey, this, Nick, for that quick. matter. And hockey. There's so many sports right now. Uh, that being said, can I really quickly say, Nick, before we move on? Sure. NWA Power is so awesome. Okay. I, I love it. I love the old school way that they're presenting it. Like it's like watching. It's like you know being a kid and watching. I only the only thing I wish I wish it was a square like a square format. I guess it is a square format, isn't it? Like the old four three ratio. Oh, I know what like you're you mean. Watching, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like almost like it's your, the rectangle. TV. Yeah, but it, it yeah. looks like a trapezoid on your TV because of the the lens on the camera. <laughs> right. Oh man, I I I love the whole presentation. I love yeah. it. It just it feels like a like a throwback uh, in every way. Yeah. So, but yet with some modern sensibilities, I, they're doing a fantastic job. I love it. Keep it up with those guys. If you haven't watched it, it is for free on YouTube. What's yeah. stopping you? Uh, I'm gonna put a, I'm it's... gonna put a playlist up on our channel with the NWA Power videos as well as like the AEW darks and things like that. So if you want an easy way to find it, just come to our YouTube channel and you'll find a link to the playlist there. Uh, Wait a so minute. This... Can... What? Uh, sorry. So, uh, Nicholas in the chat just said Nats up seven zero. No. They beat them 8-1 to one last night. Really? Uh, they're doing it again? Sorry, this is a wrestling show. It's not, Holy it's not smokes. Show. <laughs> without Bryce, I guess Bryce Harper was holding them back or something, right? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> hey, man, Kershaw held back the Dodgers. What do you want? Yeah, the, Nat, the Nats right. pitching this year is just lights out, dude. Just kudos to the, oh, those guys goodness. for really I, saw, bringing up a bullpen like crazy. All last, right. time I saw a choke, last time I saw a choke like the Dodgers, the Heimlich maneuver was used. Oh, anyway. Hello. Oh, hello. All right. <laughs> wrestling show. Wrestling yes. Show. All right, guys. Sorry. That's it for the main Tangential. show, but we are not done yet, Sir Ian Dangerous. We've got just enough time for our other news lightning round. Beep, 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 beep. Yes. All right. So a couple more draft notes, which we didn't get to earlier. Uh, some undrafted that are heading to Raw we didn't mention. EC3, Eric Young, and Sin Cara are going to Raw to SmackDown. Apollo Crews, Drew Gulak, I think we mentioned that. B-Team, Heath Slater, and Tamina. So still some Yay. people that we didn't mention earlier that went places. But yeah, so EC3 will be also uh, not used on Raw. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, PCO, Ring of Honor News, PCO. Beat Marty Skrull what? in the fi- my boy Marty Skrull he beat him uh, in the finals of the number one contenders tournament and PCO will challenge for the Ring of Honor title at Final Battle on December thirteenth. Currently, Rush is the champion. He's facing Jeff Cobb at Honor United in the United in the United Kingdom on October twenty seventh. I don't think Cobb's going to beat him unless Rush is going somewhere else. Hmm. Speaking of going somewhere else, the fact that Marty Skrull did not beat PCO, the leader of Villain Enterprises did not win, did not beat his subordinate, and also congratulated PCO and put him over after this whole thing. Marty Skrull's contract is up in November. Are we ready? That show is in December. Are you ready for this, Nick? Are we ready to? Are we ready to Count of three. One, no. two, three. Marty, Marty Skrull to AEW. You heard it you here heard first. first. You did hear it here first. We said it a long, long time yeah, ago. It was just a matter so, of time, frankly. It, of course, dude. He's going to be reunited <laughs> with this boy. So there it is. I think, I think, I think the uh, that's... I don't know. What, what would you call it? Like the cat's out of the bag now? That? or like the, the... We call that inevitability. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Skrull is inevitable. Mark Davis of Aussie Open has ruptured his MCL and tore his ACL. Ow. So he's out He's out for at least nine months. That's like worst case scenario for the poor guy. So yeah. Aussie Open is going to be shelled. That's Seth Rollins level of knee that's almost a year out. That's, that's yeah. bad. Brutal. Wow. That's like Joey Janela a couple years ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart, she of like the million 
and million uh, different promotions that she works for. She, seriously, she works for like 20, 25 different promotions a year. It's nuts. Yeah. Her and Tony she Storm also, were doing the world tour a couple of years ago of doing yes. everything. Oh, yes. man. Um, she was working for Evolve, and when she won her match, William Regal came out and offered her an NXT contract. She accepted Shotzi Blackheart will be going to NXT. I think that's a good pickup by them. She can she could use a little polishing, but she's going to be great. Very high ceiling on Is that Is it too one. early to speculate on the Blackheart name being tied to Tommaso Ciampa at all? Way too early. I'll be surprised if she keeps it because of Tommaso Ciampa's gimmick, right. to be honest. Gotcha. Uh, she'll, they'll probably change her name to something goofy, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Cameron Grimes. Right. Uh, this week on AEW Dark, which should be going on right about now, you may hear a commentator that's whose voice sounds familiar. That would be Taz. Taz is back to commentate on AEW Dark. No word on if this is going to be an ongoing thing with Tony Schiavone, or if it's just a one-off. But maybe he's this is his week to try out for it. I don't know, but. Taz back in the commentary dash. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay I always Taz. liked Taz. It was Otunga like that, yeah. that I didn't really have too many nice things to say about, you know. But I, I liked Taz's his his voice and his energy and passion was always top notch, and I was always a fan of yeah. his. Yeah, I, I definitely prefer him on the desk than I do his podcast. Yes. Throw, ooh, yes. Sorry, out there. Hi, Taz. Uh, Darby Allen in an interview said that he did indeed turn down a WWE contract without even thinking about it. Just was like, nope, not going to WWE. I don't want to just sit on the shelf for a long time. I want to actually get out there and wrestle my ass off. And the reason he said that is because he doesn't want to be wrestling for a long time. He wants to start up a film career, be a filmmaker, specifically, specifically a director. And so he doesn't want to, he wants to do wrestling, make some money and then branch off into films. What so, a missed opportunity, though. Maybe he didn't know that the new Raw set would be a, uh, a half pipe. He would have had yeah, so many missed opportunities. Can you imagine that dude coming off the top of the Tron on a skateboard down the half pipe, down the ramp? He'd probably kill himself, but he'd be up for it. I was going to say, he'd hit, he'd hit the barricade and explode. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be up for it, though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> Good point. That being said, you think that uh, Shorty Gable's a bad name. Imagine what they would call Darby oh, Allen. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, Smurf, never mind. Smurfy Allen. Good luck, Darby. Hang blue. Can't wait Pain to and see blue your and call him Smurfy <laughs> Allen. Yeah, seriously. Smurfy Allen. Um, yeah, so Ice Ribbon, there's a bit of a controversy over in Japan. Ice Ribbon wrestler Julia went and worked for Stardom. The problem is, is that one day she asked for her release from Ice Ribbon. The next day she went and worked for Stardom, and they said, oh, yeah, we've hired her. Problem was that she never got her contract canceled by Ice Ribbon. So now there is a bit of a, an issue going on. Stardom has apologized to Ice Ribbon. They said that they didn't know that she was still under contract. She had apparently presented that she was out from under contract, and there was a bunch of confusion. So hmm. not sure where this is, where the heat's going to land on this, but that doesn't seem like a very professional move, in, at least in the early news that I'm hearing, by Julia herself. So a bit of hot water there. I'll keep my eye on that because that's an interesting little development. Hmm. Uh, as we mentioned, Crown Jewel is about to happen on the 31st of October. Yay! Hey. But they did, they did sign a couple more matches for it. Cesaro, uh, he of the undrafted status, will be facing off against Saudi Arabia's own Mansoor, guy who won the Royal Rumble last time to overwhelming applause. I wonder who's winning this match. Hmm. While you're contemplating that, I'll move on. As I mentioned, there's also a tag team turmoil match, kind of like the best in the world match that we had last time that Shane McMahon wouldn't shut up about. And uh, basically every tag team on their roster besides the Usos, Colognes, Ascension is going to be in that. So it's anyone's guess, but... The winner is going to get a cup and be able to say they're the best tag team in the world. Great. So I'm just going to throw this out there. Revival's winning this thing. Yeah. Just just for the promos. Or okay. Rude Ziggler to get their win back from Monday. Rude Ziggler, look for it. Oh, God. Rudolph. Yep. Uh, but no, Rudolph. they're not doing it. No, please, oh, no. No, I just I talked myself into it. I'm, tell, I'm calling it right now. Rudolph winning tag team turmoil. Rudolph winning tag team turmoil. Remember, I remember Dolph Ziggler went all the way last time. Just saying. <sighs> Could happen again. Fine. You okay. heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, we also have... Uh, Not that anybody that gives a shit about it anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to find a reason to care, Nick. Yeah. Work with me. Yep. Uh, we've also got Brock Lesnar versus Kane Velasquez, Team Hogan versus Team Flair, and Strowman versus Tyson Fury. Okay. whoop de doo uh, Roman Reigns and Becky Lynch were interviewed for Forbes, and they both said that uh, they preferred it if the fans would have a better reaction when they didn't like the storylines. They basically said, why don't you respect the wrestlers? It's okay if you don't, don't like the storylines, but don't take it out on the wrestlers who are out there busting their ass for you. Hmm. Uh, on the one side, I think they're absolutely correct. It's kind of like we said earlier in this show. I don't blame Seth 
for that awful bit on Monday Night Raw. It's unfortunate that it's him. But, hey, if we don't like something, the, the, the audience is going to express their displeasure. If I, I understand that on Twitter, a lot of people are very immature about how they express it, and they go right after, like, they've gone right after Seth, right after Becky, right after Roman has been putting up with it for years and years and years. So, on the one hand, totally agree with them. I hope people treat the wrestlers with respect because it's not their fault. Right. On the other side, to the point Roman Reigns and Becky are making, hey, man, when it sucks, we got to boo. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's just, that's just how we any respect you as works. performers. You got to respect us as fans just the same. Yeah. And the booing isn't going, like, people aren't booing uh, Kit Harrington and uh, whoever played Daenerys Targaryen. Emilia Clark. Uh, Amelia Clark, thank you. Yeah, God. Uh, they're not. We're not mad at them for the end of Game of Thrones. We're mad at Benioff and Weiss. Yeah. Right. So anyone who's getting mad at Kit Harrington and and, Daener- and and Amelia Clark don't have a good grip on reality. And the same thing with WWE. When I finished reading the first book of Game of Thrones, um, I I, om- I wanted to go hunt down and find George R. R. Martin for for spoiler alert for chopping yeah. Ned's head off. And I, I, if you don't know by now, <laughs> yeah, if you don't know by now from eight years ago, nine years right. ago, anyway, hey, th- uh, there was a red wedding, by the way. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, one more thing I wanted to throw in there real quick about Crown Jewel um, point of point oh, of order wow. here. Uh, they have now scheduled Seth Rollins in a last man standing match against the Fiend. We know that. But apparently yes. he's also been taken out of this whole Team Hogan, Team Flair thing. So who is going to be representing Team Hogan now that Seth Rollins is out? Because we know we've got oh. Randy Orton overrunning Team Flair. Now yeah, this whole a, thing's turned upside down, too. Who's a big baby that they can put with uh, with Hogan? Uh, um, don't care. We'll yep. find out, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, we could speculate, but I'd rather just find out. Yep. Um, going on uh, after the baseball game tonight, after the ALC, ALCS Game 3, backstage with Renee Young and Booker T. We'll have a preview show, uh, which is uh, sounds... Awesome. Uh, actually, they've got uh, they're gonna got Paige and Charlotte who are on analysis with them, and then Shawn Michaels and Sting are going to be appearing to break down their favorite match of all time mm. with uh, with uh, Adam Jones, who when I first read that, I was like, oh my god, the guitarist from Tool is going to be on backstage. I must watch. <laughs> then I realized that no, it's MLB guy, ML- MLB Adam Jones. And gotcha. I, I calmed down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Still cool, but nowhere near as cool. Very cool. Can you imagine if Adam Jones from Tool was on that show? Oh, I'd lose my mind. Yeah, because that would make perfect sense. Maybe he's just and a then huge re- uh, uh, wrestling fan. You never know. Right. He is. No, Adam Jones is a wrestling fan. Oh, he is? Okay. That's why I thought it was him. Yeah. Well, that's oh, even better than shit. Fan. Okay. I know. That's why I was like, <gasps> but it was not to be. Uh, also, Cain Velasquez and Rey Mysterio interviewed by Renee Young and uh, talking about Brock Lesnar at Crown Jewel. That should be uh, just riveting, right. I'm sure. Also, Triple H is going to be announcing from the Performance Center uh, two superstars are, that are going to SmackDown. I think that's what we called earlier, which was which was uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross going to SmackDown. So he'll probably be announcing that. I hope that they announce what else they're planning on doing with that, so that that WWE logic somehow makes some sort of sense. Yeah. And Nick, that's the news. Well, thank you very much for the news, Sir Ian Dangerous, and thank you guys for hanging out and listening to this episode. Uh, if, to catch more episodes, tune in Saturday. We'll be right back here on YouTube.com slash Busted Wide Open live on Saturdays at 3 p.m., Tuesdays at 8 p.m. where we do this show. But if you want to hear about AEW, NXT, SmackDown, and more things happening throughout the wide world of wrestling, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel right here at YouTube.com slash Busted Wide Open. And join us Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, where we'll talk about the back half of the week and everything else going on as well as do our patron mailbag our brand new series where our patrons send in questions and we answer them on air we used to do this as the listener questions segment at the end of our normal shows that we used to do when we were doing one a week but now we've broken it out in its own series also on youtube live stream you can join us there uh, immediately after the show at 3 p.m eastern on saturdays but to get those questions in you got to be part of our patreon uh, head over to mm. patreon.com slash bwo sign up for one of those awesome reward tiers over there be able to ask those questions every single week for just a small five dollar a month contribution it with that you also get access to the show notes for every single episode that we do uh at the ten dollar tier you can get access to bonus episodes uh swag skype calls with me and ian all kinds of good stuff over at patreon.com slash bwo 
Also, make sure you come hang out in the Busted Wide Open discussion group on Facebook. Like our page over there as well. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at BWO Podcast. And again, right here, we're on the race to 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Have that notification bell turned on. And join our Discord server. That's the other thing that we're really doing, really pushing recently. We want to build our community and not rely on the Zuck so much. Uh, we want to be able to have control of our community. So make sure, look in the description below if you're watching on YouTube or look pinned to our social media. You can find links to our Discord community right there. But my and name tell is, everyone you yeah. know, tell everyone you know, BWO. B -W -O. Tell everyone you know, B -W -O. B -W -O. Please bring everybody to us. We'd love to have more people engaging with us and uh, the community that we have so far is awesome we want to introduce everybody to it because I, I i personally like i love the interactions that i have with all all the listeners and everybody who has joined us and it's so freaking cool yep. so the more the merrier yeah bring them in for all of love you it. watching on youtube pound that like button down below for us make sure you're subscribed and thank you all for joining us shout out to everybody in the chat for showing up today and yes. keeping it lively yes. in the chat room but my name is nick howell you can find me on twitter at data center dude and I am Sir Ian Dangerous. You can find me on Twitter at Sir Ian Dangerous. But by God, somebody stop the damn match. This show is part of the Orbital Jigsaw Network. For more episodes, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher Radio. For details and show notes from each episode, check us out, orbitaljigsaw.com.